For this problem here, we have member B is subjected to a compressive force of 800 pounds. If A and B are both made of wood and are 3 8 inch thick, determine the nearest 1 4th inch, the, the smallest dimension H of the horizontal segment so that it does not fail in shear. The average shear stress for the segment or the allowable shear stress is only 300 pounds per square inch. So in this case, we're actually given the allowable or the maximum shear stress being equal to 300 pounds per square inch inch or PSI. So in this case, we are given the parameter, the maximum this structure can hold. Now the question here is we're supposed to solve for H such that it won't exceed th this 300 pounds per square inch. So we have this beam. Now this problem relates a lot to statics because it seems like to the it seems very similar to similar to those structures that we analyzed before. So in this case, where exactly is going to be the shear force being applied? Well, well, we see that it has to deal with this dimension h, and with this compressive force of 800 pounds, we have a x component as well as a y component. So this is actually this plane of this piece of wood is where it potentially could shear off because we have that y component of 800 pounds going straight down and this is the plane where we're going to be seeing that shear force. So now the first step here is to solve, well, how much shear force is it going to be seeing, the V? Well, in this case, we could see that's going to be the Y component of this 800 pounds. So we just get the Y component, which in this case is going to be um, the sine. And since we do have the rise, the run, the slope as well, we could just use the simple uh, the trig um, identities to be able to get the Y component. So the y, the y component of the force is also that shear force, which is equal to 800 pounds, 5 divided by 13, or opposite over hypotenuse to get the y component here. So this shear force is equal to 307.7 pounds. Okay, so we have, let's go ahead and do the, the write the equation of shear stress. So shear stress is equal to the shear force divided by the cross-sectional area. In this case, this cross-sectional area is just going to be rectangular. We, we know that it's going to be 3 um, eighth inch thick. And so let's draw the cross-section of it first. If you could imagine looking at it from the perspective of from, from the right to the left, Looking at it straight down, the cross section is going to be rectangular of that plane. And we know that this dimension, the thickness is 3 8 inch. And this is going to be the height that we're supposed to be solving for. So it's always good to see from what perspective are you looking at. Sometimes this could be a bit confusing if you're dealing with a little bit more complex geometry. But just, um, I would say, just have a little bit of patience. Try to visualize this problem. So now the cross-sectional area of this plane that's, going, that's basically being sheared, sheared off is the cross-sectional area is 3 8 inch times the height. So we already know the shear force is 307.7 pounds divided by height times 3 eighth inch here. So we know the maximum allowable, in this case, 300 pounds per square inch. So this is what we already have for the shear, shear stress, the allowable. So all we have to do is do some um, algebraic manipulation such that we solve for the H. So in this case, we bring H to this other side and we divide it by the shear stress on both sides such that we solve for the H. So H is equal to the shear force divided by the maximum allowable max times um, in this case, it's going to be cross-section areas h times 3 eighth. We just leave the 3 eighth inch here. 
So we just plug and go ahead and uh, solve for that h dimension. And so our h height is equal to 2.75 inches. So one thing to keep track of is all the units. We have inch here. This is going to cancel out with one of the inches here. And we have left pound per inch. The pound cancels out. And since this is a, the denominator, we essentially flip it. And the units left over is only in inches. So our height is 2.75 inches when you round up to the nearest 1 fourth inch. Now this is the main reason why we have this, why we learn about the normal stress as well as the shear stress because it allows us to be able to um, design um, objects, mechanisms to have the respective geometry or dimension such that it won't exceed a certain point so it will not fail. In this case, we already have the criteria of the maximum shear stress that it was allowed we were supposed to solve for the geometry of this and this is exactly what we did we got the shear force that was being applied and we did some algebraic manipulation to solve for that unknown here everything else was given or calculated and then we saw for the dimension and this is so it won't exceed that 300 pounds per square inch so those are the common units when you're dealing with either normal stress or shear stress you either have in it in newtons per meter squared or kilopascals or you have it in pounds per square inch and these are some fundamental concepts that are very important and when it comes to the design such that um such that they will not fail under certain loading conditions.